Hello everyone and welcome back to the mini hack solve series. In this episode, we'll solve a Salesforce integration hack. We'll be using Apex callouts with new improved name credentials. We'll process the response and upset the records into your Salesforce org using external ID. Towards the end of the video, I'll also show you our new beta version of Instant for developers. We'll see how to use it to build the solutions. If you haven't watched earlier episodes, let me tell you that mini hacks is one of the most popular areas both at Dreamforce and Trailhead DX, where people come into the zone, pick up a hack and solve it. Each hack contains the requirements on what to do but not how to do it. It also specifies the features that ought to be used while you build the solution for the hack. So let's go and check the hack. In this hack, we'll create an animal inventory using Apex callouts. Let's look into the description. Acme Inc. is a volunteer organization that supplies food to animals in designated parks. They plan to use Salesforce to track and manage the list of animals and their daily food supply. They have partnered with a third party agency that provides an API endpoint that returns the most up to date count of animals in different parts around them. As a developer for Acme Inc., you have been assigned a task to update the list of animals in their Salesforce org based on the results from the API endpoint. Here, they also clearly mentioned the features to be used. We'll use the latest name credentials and Apex callouts to complete this task. Now, let's look into the requirements. As per the first requirement, we can use any org of our choice. I'll use a scratch org, but you may also use a developer edition if you wish to. In the mini hack zone, we provide the laptops for the participants. So we want to make sure that they work in the dedicated folder and later we can clean it up for the next participant. Here are our actual requirements. We need to create the animal object with the given fields. So let's switch to Visual Studio Code. I created a fresh project, named it Animal Inventory and connected it to a Scratch Org. If you are new to Visual Studio Code, SFDS project or Scratch Org, you can check this playlist of quick starts that shows how to set up your Salesforce developer tools. It starts with setting up Visual Studio Code, creating an SFDX project, working with the developer edition and sandbox and finally working with the Scratch Orgs. Okay, now let's launch our org by clicking the open org button. Let's open object manager and create a custom object. We'll call it animal. As per the requirement, the record name should be animal ID in the format a hyphen 0000. Okay. So let's do that by selecting an auto number. Let's leave all other things default for now and save it. Next, we'll have to create the fields. Let's create a new field of text type. and name it animal name. We can leave all other values as default and click next, next and save and new. Let's create a pick list. Called food category. With values herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore. Let's select next, next, and save and new. Next, we'll create a number type field and call it count. Let's select next, next, and save and new. Let's create a text field and call it park name.
let's select next next and save a new finally we'll create a field to store external id let's select number for that let's give the name external id the most important point to note here is we'll check the checkbox external id that makes this field as an external id field let's click next next and finally save it now the object is ready so let's go back to the requirements the next requirement is to set up the name credentials with the given details we'll have to use the new name credentials and should not use the legacy name credentials okay you can check this detailed video to understand the different types of salesforce integrations and also learn how to set up and use the new name credentials Let's do a quick recap of hack relevant content from this video. Let's start by looking at how HTTP works with the basic authentication. An application, in this case Salesforce app, can make a callout request to a web service to perform the desired action on a given resource. The web service processes the request and sends the response back. Each callout request is associated with an HTTP method and an endpoint. The HTTP method indicates what type of action. For example, the GET method is used to obtain information about a resource from the server. In this case, we are using a GET method and trying to get a list of animals through this endpoint. The response body contains the list of animals. Some other common HTTP methods include POST, DELETE, PUT, etc. The POST method is used to create a resource. The DELETE method to delete a resource and put method to create or replace a resource. For the HTTP basic authentication scheme, the authorization header is sent with the request. This authorization header holds the credentials in the encoded format. In this case, username and password are concatenated with a colon, converted to a binary value and then encoded using base64 encodings. It is prefixed with basic space and sent as an authorization header. Let's go back to the requirements once again. They gave a URL and basic authentication. Let's validate it in the browser. We'll open a new tab and open developer tools. You can open the developer tools by clicking the three dots on the top right here and select more tools and then developer tools. I also want to see the request and response. So let's open the network tab. Now let's copy the URL from the requirements and open it in the browser. You can see that it asks for a username and password. Let's enter the username and password. In the network tab, you can see that we got a success response. Good. Let's examine the request and response. We got a 200 status code and if we go down, you can notice that it sends basic space encoded authentication in the authorization header. It is a base64 encoded binary value of username and password as I said earlier. One other requirement in the hack is to use the new improved name credentials to store the endpoint URL and authentication. So let's go and see how the new name credentials work. A name credential specifies the URL of a callout endpoint and its required authentication parameters in one definition. You can skip remote site settings when you use name credentials. With the Winter 23 release, Salesforce introduced an improved name credentials that is extensible and customizable. Now endpoint URL and authentication are separated from the callout definition. By separating the endpoint URL and authentication from the callout definition, there are many advantages. Name credentials make callouts easier to maintain. For example, if an endpoint URL changes, you update only the name credential. All callouts that reference the name credential continues to work as it is. If you have multiple logs, say the development environment, production environment, etc., you can create a name credential with the same name but with a different endpoint URL in each arc. 
In this case, you need not change the Apex code referencing this name credential and deploy it across all the orgs. Let's now check how the name credentials work. The first step is to define the external credential. It holds the authentication method, for example, OAuth2, and the related details, for instance, auth provider and scope, etc. You can map this external credential with one or more permission sets. The way we set up permissions in the external credential has changed a little since I made the video basic REST callouts. You can now either use profiles or permission sets. I'll show how to use it with profiles in this video. It is also similar for permission sets as well. These permissions are verified for authorization while making the callouts. You can then associate this external credential with a name credential. The name credential specifies a callout endpoint and an HTTP transport protocol. Whenever we do a callout using the name credential, it looks up to the external credentials for authentication and permission sets or profiles for authorization. We are now ready to set up the basic authentication with the name credentials. You can refer to this help documentation to see the steps to set this up. The first step is to create the external credential. Let's do it. In the setup, you can find name credentials under security. Let's search for it and select it. Let's create the external credentials first and later we'll connect it to the name credential. So let's click the new button in the external credentials tab. Let's give a name like basic auth. Next, select the authentication provider. You can see that it supports OAuth 2 and AWS Signature version 4, etc. We can select a custom authentication protocol to work with basic authentication. So let's select it and save it. Here you see three sections. The first section shows the related name credentials. This section credential is not yet connected to any name credential, hence this section is empty for now. The next section is external credential principles. These principles map to user permissions to authorize them to make callouts. If you have worked with new name credentials earlier, you can notice that this section has changed. Earlier it was permission set mapping and now it is principles. Now you can use either a permission set or a profile for authentication. Let's create a new principle. We can give a meaningful name such as admin, marketing group, etc. So let's say admin. We can enter a sequence number or leave it default. A sequence number specifies the order of principles to apply when a user participates in more than one principle. Like he can be an admin and he can also be a marketing lead. For custom authentication, the identity type defaults to the name principle and it can't be modified. In general, the identity type can be name principle or per user principle. A name principle applies the same credential or authentication configuration for the entire org, while per user authentication provides access control at the individual user level. Let's now add the authentication parameters for the username and password and save the values. In this last section, we can define the custom headers. We know from the requirement that we need to send the credentials in the authorization header. So let's create a header. Let's give the header name authorization. We can use name credential formula functions in the value field of custom headers. If you look at the name credentials documentation, you can see that we have formula functions for base64 encoding, converting a value to a blob, etc. The link to the documentation is provided in the description below. You can create the formula for base64 encoding binary value of your username and password. Let's see if it is already available in basic authentication with name credentials help document. You can copy it from here and paste it. You can replace this placeholder external credential name with our external credential name that is basic auth.
If you have multiple headers, you can also control the order of the headers with the sequence number. A name credential can now reference this external credential. Let's go back to the name credentials tab and create a new name credential. Let's name it Animal Caller. Enter the base URL. Optionally, you can also include the path but not the query parameters. Select the external credential that we created. The name credential generates an authorization header automatically but we want to use our own authorization header. So uncheck the generate authorization header. Check allow formulas in the HTTP header as we are using the formula in our header. You can also specify the namespaces if you are going to use this name credential with managed packages. Save it. We have one last step in setting up name credentials. We have to enable external credential principal access in either the permission set or the profile. Let's do it for the profile. The process is pretty much similar for the permission set as well. So you can choose to use profile or permission set. I logged in as system admin. So let me open the system admin profile. Let's edit enable external credential principal access. Let's add our external credential to enable external credentials. We have now set up the name credentials. Let's go back and check the next requirement. As per the requirement, we need to create an Apex class that uses the name credential and makes a caller. The sample response is also shared here. Let's switch to VS Code and create a class named Animal List Controller. Add a method named MakeGetCallout. We can find an example Apex code of a callout using a name credential in the Apex Developer Guide. Let's go to the Apex Developer Guide and here you can see a section Name Credentials as callout endpoints. Here you can find an example code. Let's copy it. Switch to VS Code and paste it into the method. In this code, we are creating an HTTP request object. We are setting the endpoint with the name credential. It has a simple syntax, a callout colon name credential name. Let's change it to animal callout. We can also use the path. In our case, it is API slash animals. We are setting the request with the get method, creating an HTTP object, sending the request and storing the response in HTTP response. Let's save and deploy it. And test it using anonymous effects. You can see that it has successfully executed and got the response. Let's now go and check the final requirement. We need to insert or update, that is, upset the records from the endpoint into the animal object. There is also a hint to use the external ID field to map the records. So let's go back to the VS Code and implement it. Let's first write down the steps. We have created an HTTP request. We have set the name credential as an endpoint. We have sent the request and got the response. Now we'll have to process the response. To save some time, I have already written the code. Let's copy paste it and examine it. Here we are checking for the status code to be 200 for success. If we look at the response in the requirements, we know that we are getting the JSON response. So let's pass the response JSON in the code. We want to bulkify the code. So let's create a list to hold the animal records to observe. Next, we'll iterate over the response and extract the data. If we look at the response in the requirements once again, you can see that we are getting ID, name, foot category, count, and park name. 
we can use the id as an external id hence i am storing it in a variable called animal external id similarly i am extracting animal name food category etc we are then creating a record of type animal using these values and then adding it to the list of records to be upserted finally we are upsetting the record here you can notice that i am using the upset statement with the list to be upserted and a field to match the records we have defined this field as an external id in our animal object let's save and deploy it Now let's run the anonymous apex once again and you can see that it has run successfully. Let's open the org and check the animals tab. Here you can see that it has inserted six records. Let's open one of the records. You can see that we got all the details. With that, we have completed the hack. But I want to show you one feature as a bonus. This feature is available as an open beta with the Winter 24 release. You can probably guess it. Yes, I'll show you a sneak peek of Instant for Developers, how to set it up and use it to build solutions. Instant for Developers is now available in beta. You can enable it in the org and it is available as a VS Code extension. You can check the capabilities and refer to the terms of use from the Salesforce extensions for VS Code and Code Builder documentation. The setup is as easy as toggling a button. Go to Setup, search for Einstein and select Einstein for Developers. Toggle this button to enable it. If you want to use it in the scratch org, then enable instant for developers in the dev hub org. You can add this feature in the scratch org definition file and create the scratch org. That's it. Let's now see how we can build a solution for the callout using instant for developers. Now I'm in VS Code. I have installed this extension. Let's connect our project to the org where we have enabled instant for developers. Once connected, you can see a new instance symbol in the activity bar. If you don't see it, run developer colon reload window from the command palette. It refreshes your VS Code environment. Let's click the instant icon to launch the instant sidebar. Let's type create an apex class with a method to make a callout and the method does not take any parameters. Let's create an apex class with the same name and copy paste the code. You can actually click copy code and paste it in the editor. You can further improve your prompt to generate a more appropriate code. Let's refine the prompt a little more to use name credentials. You can see that it now changes the code in the method. You can copy paste that code. You can further improve your prompt to generate a more appropriate code if you want. But let me show you another way of using this. Now I want to process the success response. I can put the cursor here, launch the command palette and type Einstein. You have various commands here. You can generate the code which focus to the instance sidebar, etc. Let's select generate code. Here you can enter the prompt. Let us say create code block to process success response. You can accept the response or try again to give a new prompt. This time let us say create code block to process success response with 200 status code. There you can see that it has generated the code to process 200 status code. So you can progressively build this solution. Try the feature and let us know in the comment section below. That's all in this video. There can be more than one possible solution for a problem. If you find a better solution, please let us know in the comment section below. 
Also, let us know your thoughts on the content that we provide on Salesforce Developers YouTube channel. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to get the notifications of the latest videos that are being added to the Salesforce Developers channel. With that, thank you.